Hi guys and welcome back. We're going to have a look at uh, Fijoas today and I've got a couple in my garden which I want to show you. We've got this one here. This one here. It's pretty much at its full size. It's around about sort of three and a half meters by about four meters. So Fijoas do get pretty big. So if you are growing them in your garden, you do need to leave a little bit of space, especially if you're not going to prune them. You can prune them, which is kind of handy. You can clip them. They will respond to a light clipping or even a hard clipping. Then you can make them into a hedge. Uh, we'll just have a look around. This one here, for some reason, this year has not fruited. And I'm not sure why. But on the other hand, this one here, is fruiting really well. You can see those sort of fruits on there. Now, one of the things I do like about Fijoas is that they don't really get attacked by many insects, although you can see they're getting a little bit chewed here, but overall they're a fairly low maintenance plant. You really don't have to do much with them. Um, you just grow them. They're super tolerant of coastal conditions and windy conditions. So generally these plants with a sort of silver, silvery leaf under underneath surface are quite drought resistant. These plants will, they don't seem to mind uh, any, you know, just average soil. They are, um, yeah, easy to grow. This one here, this particular plant here has been in for about five years and it's around about two meters by about two meters high versus this one which has been in oh since we've been here so this would be at least 15 years old and this is probably looking at around about the four meters by about five meters wide so it's a really good fruit to have in your garden it's early autumn to winter when it fruits and generally for harvesting if you can sort of see here this these are not quite ready yet there are uh, they are still unripe so you don't really want to pull them off the tree too early you want them almost when they've fallen on the ground or just before and you can pick them off we'll have a look at uh, the different varieties next the um but yeah that's fijoas the name fijoa comes from a couple of botanists one called his surname was fijoa and the other guy was cello and that was so the botanical name is fijoa salaviana and I believe this one was Mammoth, and I think that one I bought was unique. Both good varieties. But we're going to have a look next at the availability down at the local nursery. And we'll cut one up and see what it's like. And that will be probably wrap it up. But it's a good landscaping plant to, to use. You can see it in the background there. It's a decent size. It's a good screen shrub and a good fruiting plant. Um, tastes kind of like a pineapple pear. I wouldn't say it was pineapple, though, but yeah. Okay, guys, we'll go down to the nursery next. We'll see you down there. Okay, guys, so we're here at Mitre 10, and we're just going to have a look at some of the varieties of Fijoas we've got. So let's have a look. I'll pull some out for us, but here they are down here. All different types. We've got this one here, which is Fijoa Antoinette. It's an early ripening one, and it's got extra large sized fruit. Very sweet, very good storage, strong grower but not overly vigorous, the semi-upright habit, four by four. Now, one of my favorite ones is this one here, which is unique. Now, it says very early and a good keeper, medium-sized fruit, smooth, juicy flesh, and mildly aromatic, four by three, self-fertile, upright, spreading habit. So most of these fog feeds are partially self-fertile. Um, some of them are, you know, the more the more you have, the better they fruit. That is one of the things um, that you, uh, that is sort of fairly common with most fruit trees is that they do better when there's a lot more of them. This one's called um, Apollo. And what does it say about Apollo? Attractive evergreen tree, useful for hedging bright red flowers around Christmas time. Most of them flower around about Christmas time. Followed by delicious fruit feed high nitrogen, self, semi-self-fertile, it's pollinated by birds, four before, so that's a four before, and that's Apollo. And Bambina TM, attractive patio plant, small in size, leaf, flower and fruit, 
abundance of pulp with sweet aromatic flavor ideal for small hedge um, Christmas followed by fruit so you're around about 1.5 meters by 1.5 meters so that's obviously a fairly small variety okay guys that shows you what they are I mean if you have to buy these uh, fruit in the uh, shops you're looking at about $13 a kg so here you can buy them roughly from anywhere about tw between $20 and about $35 for a plant depending on size so let's have a look probably at next we'll have a look at probably opening one of these up and seeing what they look inside okay guys it's time to cut one of these these in half that's straight cut this one's a fairly ripe one so you can have a look at the inside of it it's nice to get a little like a teaspoon and just scoop that flesh out and eat it it's quite nice right that finishes the topic on feed jowers if you th found this useful please give it the thumbs up otherwise we'll see you in the next video mm -hmm.